Hello everyone, so to finish up Sci-Fi Week I thought I would show you my manufactured Star Trek model collection. I've been building this up for ooh, about four or five years now, but I started out with some basic things and bit by bit more of these things have been manufactured. So this is a mix of Japanese candy toy manufacturers, American toy manufacturers, and Eagle Moss's new collection, uh, the official Starships collection, which is still running and is continuing to bring out interesting ships. So to start off with, here's the classic USS Enterprise from the 1960s series, uh, Constitution class. This is made by F Toys. I saw the original model of this in the Smithsonian in Washington DC recently. The original Star Trek model. So I can say that this is a pretty accurate looking, looking little miniature model. So second of all, here is the refit USS Enterprise from the motion picture, Wrath of Khan, Search for Spock. Um, this one is a Johnny Lightning model, which I got in 2009. Uh, I really like the surface detail of this one, because you can even see they've, they've got printed stuff on the rim of the saucer, including windows, and a little Starship USS Enterprise thing on the side. Uh, generally it looks great, the shape is fantastic, moulding is great. The only thing that's slightly annoying is they've got a moulding line down the middle of the deflector, but otherwise, this was always one of my favourite Star Trek ships, still a classic. This one here is from Eagle Moss. This is the USS Excelsior that they brought out about, ooh, a year ago maybe, in different, they're different for different countries. But as you can see, it's very nice moulding, looks very much like the Excelsior. Unfortunately, it had a few inaccuracies, so I changed, I painted this, this blue ring around here and changed the main deflector because it didn't look quite as good as I, would, I like it. I like it glowing like that because that's the way it looks on screen. Otherwise though, fantastic detail on the surface. As you can see, they've done a little bit of patterning on the, on the side of the hull and the top of the saucers, and they've got blue plastic in the engines. Here's another one from the classic movies. This is the Reliant from the Wrath of Khan. Um, this one is a fan favorite because it was the first ship to appear on screen that wasn't like the Enterprise. They designed this one to be different from the Enterprise so that you could tell the difference between the two. What I really like about this model, this is from Eagle Moss, is that you've got the glowing uh, nacelles there. Actually, you've got fantastic surface detail right down to, as you can see, there's some patterning, Aztec patterning on the hull, and the little torpedo launcher looks great. It's a great looking ship, and the underneath, is, as you can see, is also very well detailed. This one always falls off its stand. Here's the Johnny Lightning USS Enterprise A from Final Frontier, The End of the Voyage Home, and Undiscovered Country. The moulding is exactly the same as the previous one, except that they did a way better paint job. Look at the Aztec patterning on the saucer there. I'd never seen this be uh, on a model of this size before this one. Continuing with the Eagle Moss collection, this is the Enterprise D. This was their first issue. Uh, really famous ship, so they brought out something very, very well known. As you can see, you've got blue plastic in the nacelles, and really nice surface detail overall. This looks probably about as good as any model of the Enterprise D I've ever seen. It's very nice and weighty, the, all of this is die cast metal, they've got aztec all over it, window detail, escape pods painted in, same on the underneath, they've got a huge amount of detail, just look at that, it looks gorgeous. Yes, this is one of my favourite Starship designs, obviously I grew up with the next generation so this is one of my favourites. Continuing with the 90s Star Treks, here is the USS Defiant. This is an F-Toys model that I got a few years ago. Uh, I did make a few minor adjustments to the paint. I painted in the main deflector at the front, the facade collectors, and the back of the engines there. I also added a few little extra panels of color just to make it look that little bit better. But yeah, this is another one of these very unusual but very, very cool spaceship designs from Deep Space Nine. Now, a few years ago, I got this Johnny Lightning version of the USS Voyager, which as you can see has the bending engines. So usually it's sitting, they're sitting down like this, and then when it goes to warp, they, oops, they bend up and it zooms off. So that's cool, that's a cool touch. However, this is a very fragile model, so I tend to keep this one safely um, on a shelf where it's not gonna get knocked over and broken. So Eagle Moss came to the rescue with a much more sturdy, much better detailed version of the Voyager as you can see here. This is one of the best ones I've seen in terms of moulding. However, the paint detail and the amount of surface detail on it wasn't that great, so I went round and added a bit more. As you can see, I've added on the top, I've added quite a few of the windows, 
very, very carefully with white paint. I've added some stuff in the little sensor array at the front here, back behind the bridge. And I also repainted the main deflector. So as you can see, there's a lot more blue and it's slightly brighter. So it looks just a bit more like it looks on screen. So no collection of Star Trek ships would be complete, especially the 90s Star Treks, without the Delta Flyer, which I have here as a tiny little resin model, which I painted myself and then had to add infuriatingly tiny decals to the surface of it and then gloss it all over. But I still think it looks pretty cool. This one is made to go with a much larger model of Voyager so you could prop it up at the back and make it look like it's flying into the shuttle bay. Here is the famous Enterprise E from Star Trek First Contact, Insurrection and Nemesis. This is one of my favorite designs from the entire series. Uh, First Contact came out when I was uh, a kid, so I always loved this version of the Enterprise. This one is by Konami, um, or Konami. Again, I did a little bit of painting modification, added a few of the windows, changed the main deflector, so it looks a bit, little bit better, but I still think this is one of the coolest looking ships, and I'm so glad that I have a little, a little model of it. Here's a big beastie. This is the USS Excelsior that just came out from Hot Wheels. I love the molding on this one. In fact, it's, it's ever so slightly better in terms of molding than the Eagle Moss one. So as you can see, um, that's one of the great things about these models is that it leaves a lot of room for your own improvement. So I changed the main deflector, added a few windows along the sides. The only slight oversight is that they printed this number here the wrong way around. Now here is a ship that is technically non-canon because it was seen in an alternative future episode uh, which may or may not have happened but it's still cool looking so somebody made a model of it in this case it was Johnny Lightning they've got your three-engined dreadnought version of the Galaxy Class Enterprise um, you've got I did think this was very cool looking you've got fins on the bottom here an extra engine with bits added on the top some sort of cannons and stuff, and then there's an enormous laser gun on the bottom, which is a bit silly, but who cares, because it still looks really, really cool. And here's one of the great things about um, the Eagle Moss collection, which is that they're starting to do ships that have never been done before, uh, at least not on this scale, uh, not, and not officially. Uh, this is the Equinox from the Voyager episode Equinox, um, Nova class. It's become another fan favorite because it's, it's just kind of cool and sort of rugged looking, and it's an unusual shape. Um, I really like this model because the light, the light piping works really well when you hide it, hold it up to the light and it looks like the engines are glowing. Now a lot of us Trek fans have been waiting a long time for a model of this ship. This is the Thunderchild uh, from Star Trek First Contact, but it also cropped up in a few Deep Space Nine episodes and Voyager episodes uh, here and there. This is one of the ones that you first see in the Battle of Sector 001 in the start of First Contact where they're fighting the Borg. Um, it's one of these very unusual designs with this sort of catamaran-like double hull coming off the back, underslung deflector here. But yeah, this is one of the cool ones that everyone was waiting a long time to see, and it's pretty well done by Eagle Moss here. Finally, this is going to be controversial, but I do have a model of the Enterprise from the new J.J. Abrams reboot of the Star Trek uh, franchise. I think this design is really cool, and I like it, and I won't apologize for it, even though I have my problems with the films as movies, I do think the design of the Enterprise looks really neat. The way they described their approach to the design of this particular ship was that they wanted to turn the Enterprise into a hot rod, and I think you can see that that's exactly what they did. So, I hope you enjoyed seeing all my Star Trek and sci-fi models. Uh, we'll be back to regular trains programming next time. See you!